Good morning and welcome to Walking with Jesus Through the Word, one chapter per day. My name is Pastor Jason Van Bemmel from Forest Hill Presbyterian Church. It's our 871st day together in the Word of God, and we are in Proverbs 24, back in the book of Proverbs, um, getting closer to the end, 31 chapters in Proverbs. And so we pick up with another chapter of wisdom from the Lord today. Let's pray. Father in heaven, thank you for your, wis your wisdom and your word. Thank you for the privilege of hearing from you. Father, you are the source of all wisdom, and you say that if any of us lack wisdom, we can ask of you, and you will give generously without partiality. So we pray that you would teach us your wisdom and help us to walk in it, help us to live according to it. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Proverbs 24. Be not envious of evil men, nor desire to be with them, for their hearts devise violence, and their lips talk of trouble. By wisdom a house is built, and by understanding it is established. By knowledge the rooms are filled with all precious and pleasant riches. A wise man is full of strength, and a man of knowledge enhances his might. For by wise guidance you can wage your war, and in abundance of counselors there is victory. Wisdom is too high for a fool. In the gate he does not open his mouth. Whoever plans to do evil will be called a schemer. The devising of folly is sin, and the scoffer is an abomination to mankind. If you faint in the day of adversity, your strength is small. Rescue those who are being taken away to death. Hold back those who are stumbling to the slaughter. If you say, Behold, we did not know this, does not he who weighs the heart perceive it? Does not he who keeps watch over your soul know it? And will he not repay man according to his work? My son, eat honey, for it is good. And the drippings of the honeycomb are sweet to your taste. Know that wisdom is such to your soul. If you find it, there will be a future, and your hope will not be cut off. Lie not in wait as a wicked man against the dwelling of the righteous. Do no violence to his home, for the righteous falls seven times and rises again, but the wicked stumble in times of calamity. Do not rejoice when your enemy falls, and let not your heart be glad when he stumbles, lest the Lord see it and be displeased, and turn away his anger from him. Fret not yourself because of evildoers, and be not envious of the wicked, for the evil man has no future. The lamp of the wicked will be put out. My son, fear the Lord and the king. And do not join with those who do otherwise, for disaster will arise suddenly from them. And who knows the ruin that will come from them both? These also are sayings of the wise. Partiality in judgment is not good. Whoever says to the wicked, you are in the right, will be cursed by peoples, abhorred by nations, but those who rebuke the wicked will have delight, and a good blessing will come upon them. Whoever gives an honest answer kisses the lips. Prepare your work outside, get everything ready for yourself in the field, and after that build your house. Be not a witness against your neighbor without cause, and do not deceive with your lips. Do not say, I will do to him as he has done to me. I will pay back the man for what he has done. I passed by the field of a sluggard, by the vineyard of a man lacking sense, and behold, it was all overgrown with thorns. The ground was covered with nettles, and its stone wall was broken down. Then I saw and considered it. I looked and received instruction, a little sleep, a little slumber, a little folding of the hands to rest, and poverty will come upon you like a robber, and want like an armed man. That is Proverbs 24. And some of the major themes we see here are that wisdom 
which is discernment and skill for living well according to God's truth, right? Wisdom, honesty, obedience to authority, diligence, and hard work. These are the things that make for a good life. What are some things that derail that? Well, some of the things that derail it in verses 1 and 2, it's envy. That green-eyed monster. When you look at someone who's not living according to wisdom, someone who's not living according to integrity, and they're doing really well. They're, they're wealthy. They're having a great time. And you think, maybe, maybe all this integrity and wisdom and honesty and righteousness and diligence, maybe all this stuff isn't all it's cracked up to be because that guy is not doing any of it. And he's having a lot of fun and he's making a lot of money and his conscience doesn't seem to bother him. And maybe I should be like them. Don't do it. Proverbs warns us. They have more trouble than you know, right? Their hearts devise violence. Their lips talk of trouble. There's more going on. The people whose life you think is so easy have more trouble, more problems, more issues than you're aware of. If you want a life that's built well, if you want a life that's furnished well, if you want a life that is truly healthy and strong, it has to be lived according to wisdom and understanding and knowledge. Wisdom is the skill to know how to live right. Understanding is is seeing the connections between things, the connections between actions and consequences, the connections between character and conduct and conversation and the consequences of your actions. And knowledge is to know the truth. Those are the things that make you strong. Those are the things that make you discerning and able to navigate through life well. But foolish people aren't aren't patient for such things. They want the immediate payoff. They want instant gratification. And so no one listens to them. When verse 7 says, wisdom is too high for a fool, in the gate he does not open his mouth, no one listens to a fool. No one really respects a fool. They get instant gratification. They get the cheap thrill. They get the quick laugh. But when it comes time to actually get advice for a difficult situation, people don't generally tend to listen to the fools. They think they're good for a laugh, but they don't really want to hear what they have to say. Planning to do evil. Devising folly. Scoffing at that which is right. These are other things that derail right, the wise life. Planning to do evil because you think, well, if I just cut this corner, if I just cheat in this way, if I just do this little unethical thing, I'll get something good out of it. Or devising folly. I'm going to do this thing that's absolutely foolish, absolutely contrary to God's word, but it'll be fun. Or you're scoffing at wisdom. All those things, they, they undermine, they sabotage, they derail the kind of life that God has for us. What's another way that we get derailed from a life of wisdom? Fainting in the day of adversity. When things get hard, we sometimes want to give up. When it's difficult to keep going, when it's difficult to do the right thing because it just seems to be so long and so hard and so tiresome, it's not good. It's not good. At those times, we need to realize that God is keeping watch over our soul. God understands our thoughts and our intentions, and God will keep us, and God will reward us. Not that our salvation is by works, but there is a reward for faithful stewardship. And there's God who, who strengthens those whose hearts are committed to him and who blesses those who are earnestly seeking his will. And so, Proverbs tells us here, just like honey is good and sweet, wisdom is such to your soul. That's where your future is going to be. That's where your hope is going to be. Not in, not in quitting not in foolishness, not in selfishness, in wisdom. That's the future. That's the hope. The righteous falls seven times and rises again, but the wicked stumble at times of calamity. Why is that? Because God's ways are right and God is just. 
Does that mean bad things don't happen to God's people? That's not what that means at all. There is calamity, right? The righteous falls seven times. You realize that? Like seven times the righteous can fall in calamity, hardship, distress, difficulty. But they're going to rise again by the grace of God. Whereas the wicked, when they stumble, they're ruined completely because God is not on their side and is not supporting them. Now, we could look at that and we could say, oh, then I'll rejoice when my enemy falls. No, don't do that. Leave it to God's will, right? This, we, we live in a culture where there's such animosity, there's such polarization, and there's like this rejoicing. We see it all the time in social media and the media all around us. There's rejoicing in the downfall of the enemy. Oh, he said something stupid. Ha ha ha. Look at him. He's an idiot. Or he did something really, really dumb. Ha ha. Look at him. He's totally unqualified. Or she messed up in a big, big way. Ha ha ha. Look at her. Right? This is what we do in our culture. Hopefully not what we do, but the we in terms of our culture, that's what our culture does. God doesn't want us to do that. God wants us to leave it to him. Right? Do not rejoice when your enemy falls. Let not your heart be glad when he stumbles, lest the Lord see it and be displeased and turn his anger away from him. If God sees that, he's going to say, oh, you're a scoffer. That puts you, you realize if you participate with the world in that, that puts you in the category of being a scoffer. and makes you liable to God's disciplinary judgment. Fret not yourself because of evildoers and don't be envious of the wicked. So, when we see an enemy, a wicked person, someone that we deeply disagree with, someone we think is doing bad in the world, right? If they mess up, we can be tempted to rejoice at their downfall. And God says, don't do that because we, he could judge us for that because that's scoffing and that's being malicious. The other thing we could do is if they're being successful, we could be anxious and worrisome. But God says, don't do that either because the evil man has no future and the lamp of the wicked will be put out. And so what do we do? Fear the Lord and the king, and don't join in with those who do otherwise. There's great advice, great truth, great wisdom. Fear the Lord, honor those who are in authority, and don't join in with those who do otherwise. Otherwise, when disaster strikes, what's going to happen? And then we have, at the end of Proverbs 24, additional sayings of the wise. We don't know exactly who wrote these, where they came from, but they're more collected sayings of the wise. There's a warning against showing partiality, against calling right wrong or wrong right, a, a call to, to be honest and to be willing to rebuke the wicked. And then there's this call to diligence. Prepare your work outside. Get everything ready, right? And then this final picture that ends with the, the field of the sluggard. So the final word in Proverbs 24 is to be diligent, to plan ahead, to do your homework, to get your things ready, to be on top of things, and don't be lazy. Don't be self-indulgent. Don't be passive. Don't, uh, don't presume or it's going to lead to poverty. How do we live according to this wisdom? It all sounds good. How do we actually live according to it? Well, remember this. Remember that the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom and that knowledge of the Holy One is understanding. In humility, recognizing our own tendency to folly, to laziness, to selfishness, to worldliness, we need to humbly petition the Lord to write wisdom deep in our souls and by the grace of the Holy Spirit working in us that we might walk more like Jesus, who is ultimately the embodiment of true godly wisdom. Let's pray. Oh Lord God, we know that wisdom is right. We know that it's best to live according to biblical standards of what is true and right and just. We know it's good to be honest, to be diligent, to be faithful, to act with integrity. And yet we're so weak and so fleshly. We can be so lazy and so distracted. We can be envious. We can be resentful and spiteful. We can give in to the ways of the world so easily. We need you. We need you to be our teacher, to be our, our savior, our redeemer, to change us more and more into the image of Jesus. 
that we might walk as he walked, that we might trust you as he trusted you, that we might depend on you as he depended on you during his earthly life. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, thanks for joining me for Proverbs 24. I hope it was a blessing to you. And as always, I do hope you have a blessed day in the Lord. Mm -hmm.